right. Okay, good, go. Thank you. Thanks very much. So um, just before I start, I'll say that the talk I'm giving today is just an extract from a larger talk that I gave last month at the GSWA Open Day, uh, where um, I had a, a longer time slot, but that talk is downloadable from our ebook shop. So if you want the extended talk, you can download it from there. And uh, also before I start, I'll just acknowledge my co-authors in particular, Kath Gray, who's made it back again this morning, which is great to see that she's um, here because much of what I talked about in my open day talk was the work of Kath Gray. So as I go along, you'll probably um, realize why she in particular is acknowledged for my talk. So to kick off, there's many uh, definitions that can encompass the term microbialite or alternate terms. So terms, so I'd just like to um, say that our preferred definition is that microbialites are uh, deposits that have accreted as a result of a benthic microbial community. So under this broad definition, microbialites can have five subsets. So the first one is um, probably the most well-known microbialites, stromatolites, and these are microbialites that have a layered or laminated structure. The thrombolite has a clotted structure at the macro scale. Dendrolites, as the name would suggest, have a, a branching dendritic um, branching pattern at the macro scale. Layolites might seem like an odd subset when by definition they are structureless, but they're easily recognised at the outcrop scale by their microbial bed forms um, and their the growth and, and shape in the context of the stratigraphy. The final subset that belongs under this broad definition of microbialites are microbially induced sedimentary structures or MIS. So what's all the fuss about microbialites in WA? Well, uh, WA is one of only a handful of places where microbialites are known to be living in the marine realm today. And WA has um, the World Heritage Site of Shark Bay, which is arguably one of the best preserved of these sites. But not only do we have remarkable living microbialites, but we also have a wealth of fossil microbialite localities. So the one I have pictured here is one of the oldest known microbialite localities from the Paleoarchean Streli Pool Formation. So given that we have this wealth of microbialites in our state, it's not surprising that um, microbialites have attracted a lot of academic attention. Some of the earliest research on Australian microbialites was looking at Proterozoic examples and um, it demonstrated a use of microbialites for biostratigraphy. If you describe microbialites from the outcrop down to the micro scale in a systematic way, um, you can actually use them for biostratigraphy. Now, there's been a changing focus of microbialite research over time. So, um, although uh, originally microbialites were used for biostratigraphy, more modern um, research focuses uh, uh, are quite a lot broader. So, as we start to explore surfaces like um, Mars here in the picture, research funding has come largely from from NASA, where the research focus is on extra um, terrestrial and early life. So the systematic description of microbialites has been somewhat diluted by, these, um, by this change in focus. We've also seen a change in the focus of modern studies, uh, of studies of modern microbialites. So although early studies of living microbialites would often use them as an analogue for fossil microbialites, uh, now we have a lot of research focused on managing these uh, very unique ecosystems and protecting them against environmental stress. But over at the Geological Survey we've, we seem to have bucked the, the trend because we still need to systematically describe stromatolites to use them as a correlation tool. So pictured on the slide here is Kath who has um, made it here today. She's a retired, uh, our retired state paleontologist and in the, um, the world of stromatolite research, she's somewhat of a rock star. So Kath has spent many, many decades systematically describing stromatolites from all over the state and demonstrated that if you um, approach 
the description in a methodical, systematic way that you can actually use microbial arts as a correlation tool. I joined the Geological Survey 12 years ago, as John Gorda liked to um, remind me this morning, he saw it on LinkedIn. So 12 years ago I joined the Geological Survey just as, start, as Kath was starting to wind down towards retirement. At the same time, Peter Haynes, who's also here, over there, was beginning a revision of the uh, Neoproterozoic stratigraphy in the Amadeus Basin. So the Amadeus Basin is located here, it's a central basin it's a central Australian basin and the majority of the basin is located in the Northern Territory with only a very small portion of it uh, extending over the border into WA. It has near Proterozoic stratigraphy that ranges from Tonian to Cambrian in age. And before we began our project, there was a lot of work on the Northern Territory side of the basin. So the basin is prospective for hydrocarbons and minerals. And a lot had been done on the stromatolites that were near Proterozoic from the Amadeus Basin. So in the NT they were known and stratigraphically documented, but the stromatolites that were known from the Western Amadeus were only um, forms that were locally known from WA and there had been no biostratigraphic correlation from the western portion of the basin to the eastern part of the basin. So in 2008, Peter Haynes and I started a field campaign that extended for five years, and we worked on all of the accessible portions of uh, the Amadeus Basin that was in WA, and that extended over three, one to two fifty thousand map sheets. And what was immediately obvious when we got there, one minute, wow, okay. Um, <laughs> I've said more than I meant to. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, sorry. Um, Ken this morning talked about his Echinoderm meadows. Well, the Amadeus Basin was somewhat like a stromatolite meadow, if you like, in that it was really obvious that the stromatolites were exceptionally preserved. They were, they were very diverse. There was a large number of forms and also um, they were very abundant. So all in all, what we found at the end of the project, that there were five stromatolite assemblages that were useful for stratigraphic correlation. And so just as Kath had predicted that these um, stromatolite assemblages would be stratigraphically constrained, they were, and that became a very, very valuable tool for us in the mapping. Over the course of the project, we have revised two, one to 250,000 uh, scale map sheets and we've also um, produced a range of records and reports on stratigraphic revisions, and these are all downloadable from our e-bookshop for free if you want more information. So Pete and I are winding down the Amadeus project, that's coming to completion, but we are now expanding our results into other basins of the Greater Centralian Super Basin. So some of the newest work we're doing is in the Officer Basin. So this is a, a paleontology report that we prepared at the end of last year, I think, um, and Sarah Martin will hopefully explain this afternoon how you can get access to our um, new paleontology reports because we've resurrected them as a product type at GSWA. We're not only working in neoproterozoic basins, I'm also working on older stromatolites. So these are some stromatolites that I've been working on in the, from the paleoproterozoic. So although this work is still very preliminary, um, what I'm finding in the Hammersley province is that, again, if you approach the description of microbialites systematically, uh, that you can use them as a correlation tool and they're showing great promise in the um, Wailu and Turi Creek groups. So that's the end of the talk. Um, uh, I've used up question time, sorry, but I just wanted to alert everybody that coming out this year, GSWA has an, a bulletin and that's going to be a handbook, a microbialite handbook, authored by Kath Gray and Stan Aramik, and that is essentially going to be a how-to guide for the description of microbialites. So if you are interested in microbialites, this will be a very valuable resource, and as Kath's here today, I'm sure she'd love to talk more about it in the breaks. Thank you very much. Thank you.